Hello and welcome back once again to the semi-finals of the League of Legends 4PL Play for Fame Corsair Vengeance Cup August Qualifier number 1. I am once again joined by my tremendous co-caster, Splittington. Hello. You go. You yeah, know. Keep, you know, I like praise. I like praise. <laughs> Uh, that's all you're getting for this round. So we will have Malphite and Shen as the first two bands. So uh, yeah, take us away. Malphite, really strong initiation, shuts down a lot of AD champions. And Shen has this global presence, split pushes really well. Just generally very difficult to deal with. Nice, condensed. And uh, yeah. we're actually ahead of the mock this time. Instead of like trailing behind, I... where it's just like, you've got, you, why you pick so fast? Quick, uh. they keep vanning. Like, like... Yeah, you end up, you end up sort of passing over one or two of them, but uh, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, they're thinking about that pretty hard. Mm, and, yeah, yeah, is it good for us? It's a uh, good time. So Maokai. Good, good Maokai, yeah, that's kind of interesting. Maybe they're looking for like a double AP comp, because obviously Maokai does soak up a lot of damage in conjunction with some other characters, so uh, yeah, makes a lot of sense, and Maokai of course being one of those strong ganking junglers. Yeah, I should probably clarify why um, Maokai is so good against uh, double AP composition. It's because double AP largely relies on AoE damage. They rely on like a Vladimir ultimate, a uh, Kennen ultimate, which hits everyone. And then Maokai's ultimate obviously counters that by making you do 20% reduced damage inside his circle. So, you know, it mitigates the whole purpose. Whereas a sort of more single target focused composition doesn't really suffer in the same way. Yeah, exactly, because it's focused on one person. But, yep, Maokai like tree sponge. I would say, so uh, there you have it ladies and gentlemen. It grows on the so, coral reef! <laughs> yeah, oh, for wait, sure. Oh no, that's Malphite or something, it, but yeah. Or something, yeah, that's uh, it's, it's good for your craft there, Spuddington. So or we've, something. Or, so Malphite, <laughs> Malphite and Alistair, interestingly enough, they all have like on-target sorts of gap closers, so maybe they're trying to avoid like the Orianna matchup. With Orianna, with Alistair, Malphite, Malphite, oh, very strong basically, so it kind of makes a lot of sense. Again, they're great junglers, they just really hate the jungle apparently. Again, mm. the AoE, the, well, the, the global ultimates going down with Shen and Karthus have been banned out. Needless to say, they are extremely irritating. And uh, yeah, yeah, the first pick will be Nunu. Again. Again. Could be Nunu top, could be, could be Nunu support, could be a variety of Nunus actually. But maybe they're just <laughs> going to be going for that Cogmore Nunu lane again. They seem to really like it, and I think. Possibly in reaction to the poss that possibility, uh, a Nocturne pick would make a lot of sense because Nocturne is the ultimate diver. You, you can't stop him from reaching your carry. Um, but you know, you can obviously nuke him down once he gets there or, or gimp his damage so that he can't do anything. Or um, have a control character like Anivia and just McLaren him in, so it's always a thing you can do. For either yeah. team, of course. You know. The solution, the solution here. Yeah. The solution to a Nocturne diving in on your carry is literally just to either disengage um, with your carry somehow, or to focus him down very quickly. But, uh, but yeah, he, he is uh, an unstoppable force, you might say. Um, really? Yes, really. He's banned yeah. out, I know, but you know, Malphite, that is. It is a Malphite joke! Um, and yes, it's looking like Soas might pick up Blitzcrank, which would imply that... Nunu is going to be somewhere that isn't bot lane, um, which is, yeah, possibly top, possibly jungle. Um, though obviously they could be not taking Blitzcrank and be irritating me instead. But, um, yeah, let's yeah. go with the latter on that one. There we go. <laughs> uh, Ash has been picked in instead. Fantastic. <laughs> and Swain. Interesting. Um, Ash Nunu could definitely be bottom. Um, Nunu could also be jungle. By one of numerous amounts of positions, but Swain. He's interesting. We haven't seen a Swain for a while, but he's very strong. Uh, like Swain, where he gets going, will just like stay alive and never die. That's just Swain. But he's very difficult to get off the ground sometimes, depending on who you pick against him. Swain is very specifically accounted to Ari as well, because he can uh, simply like use the minions for a kind of a cover, and he can he has on target damage. He doesn't have to worry about um, Ari duking his um, damage with her ult. You know, he can just EQ, walk up with in bird form, and that'll do increased damage and slow her. And she, her damage output simply won't match his, even if he misses his never move. So yeah, Swain does very well against Ari, but obviously ganks can sway that either way very easily. Yeah, yeah and we do have the... Oh, it could be, I mean, the, after the buffs came in it makes a lot of sense, and then we do have... 
Kofi and Soraka. Okay, so yeah, that's a pretty strong lane. In the same way that Ezreal Soraka is a, a strong lane, because he can basically spam on the harass all day, which is essentially what makes an early game Corky so strong. And okay, Shyvana and Cho'Gath. Yeah, so I'm I'm seeing it. Cho'Gath going. Uh, oh, okay. Lamy are taking Ghost and Flash potentially. He is called AD Carry. AB fearing the worst. Looking at the team composition at the moment, and I really has been locked in his last pick. Okay, very interesting. Hmm. If you put Cho'Gath against Irelia, Cho'Gath can't bully her out fast enough. And that's that's so difficult to deal with, because uh, you end up with this Irelia who gets all the farm she ever wanted and becomes a monster. You know, that Irelia that will die of your team, will kill anyone she wants and will walk out again because she has that CC reduction passive. And yeah, like I say, Cho'Gath can't really bully her out. Um, but obviously ganks from Cyanide, but then again, Shivana isn't a particularly strong ganker. She, you know, she's not worthless. She can walk in with a red buff and keep you slowed and has quite high damage output, but she's much more focused on a kind of counter jungling role. Um, but keeping Lamia alive is looking like a very reasonable proposition when they have a Swain, Nudu, and Cho'Gath, all three of whom have bucket loads of CC. They have enough CC to make a whole team work. You know, you've got knock up and silence from Cho, slow downs all around the block for um, Nunu and slow root off Swain. You know, but um, yeah. So when it reaches late game, Lamia is obviously going to be a very strong force to be reckoned with. But that Aurelia could become a serious problem. Yeah, definitely. So, anyone you want to have a look at the runes and masteries quickly before we jump into the commercial break? Cho'Gath. Have a look at Cho'Gath. Okay, okay, let's take a look at the runes, and he's named it Malphite. Uh, okay, <laughs> so 8.1 health regen per 5 and 27 armor. Okay. <laughs> wow. Right. And 0, 26, and then 4 in utility, taking good hands, reducing time spent dead, and then someone's insight. And going straight down to Juggernaut, 26 in defense. Very interesting. All right, guys, we will be jumping to a quick commercial break. And then when we get back, it will be Fnatic versus... Um, well, their old team was called MVP, but this one is called... Bonza... A name. Be back, be back <laughs> Sorry, soon. I've forgotten.
Hello and welcome back to the semi-finals and we do have Bonjiwa or MVP against uh, Fnatic. <laughs> I am once again joined by my superb podcaster Spuddington. Bonjour or Bonjwas or something. Bonjwas, Bonjwas. 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 Yep. Bun Bungie. Yep. And Bungie? Yep. Yep. Yeah, so... <laughs> Everyone just kind of fanning out, actually looks like Fnatic Pants is doing something. So, yeah, before we start, guys, um, we do have a tournament that's coming up, and I am... one second. Professional. So, on the front page of the 4PL website, you do have the Qualification Campus Party in Berlin. It's number one, basically, on the list, so you can take a look at that. The prize purse is $25,000, which is, I have to say, pretty significant. Uh, so, yeah, go ahead and check it out. Very interesting, and there's an article about that, which is, uh, yeah, might interest you. But back onto the game. We have Fnatic moving into the enemy jungle, and whether they have seen him, I am not sure. I um. was... Nocturne definitely saw the ward go down, and then he okay. backed off, but clearly hasn't oh, seen... Oh, Rupture has landed! It's been slowed, and Dustbringer goes out for the extra movement speed. Pose in position, potentially to help him out, has not chosen an ability yet, just in case he needs the charm. The pen coming down from Lamy, and that's a crit hour as well. That's really going to hurt Nocturne as he moves into his jungle, especially with boost free. Yeah, like, if you go for a boot start, you, you don't want to be taking too much damage. But uh, yeah, and actually interesting some of the choices on Lamia, uh, Ghost Flash basically doesn't want to ever die. Uh, those are both defensive choices and they're both revolving around getting away from people who want you dead. Yeah, it's uh, it's interesting though because we don't generally see it. I mean, if you have a defensive summon, it's either heal or cleanse. Very interesting to see a, um, a ghost on, on the team, I suppose. Take a look at the team comp. It can make sense for the extra mobility, and if you look at their team in general, it's fairly mobile with Nunu there as well. And uh, yeah, I, I guess it makes sense, yeah. But interesting enough, I'm looking at their team comp, and if you have Shyvana, it's a declaration that you're going to have stable lanes which don't really need ganking. Ah, interesting, yeah, okay, just supporting that point, you have Cho'Gath bottom for the sustain, Ash top, and then Nunu roaming around, I guess, assisting Shyvana, and that's what they're looking for. Again, with the counter jungle, he's just moving straight on to Amazing 94. With the burnout, mass damage coming out, he does not have the flash, or he escaped. Twin fight will just land one more auto type flash, and there is Cyanide just uh, moving up. He cannot clear. Well, can he? Okay, gonna smite that minion and probably gonna carry on. What? He wants for the to suicide. Actually. Yeah, right, because Pose is coming up. Nice, he actually managed to get that done before. Uh... Before the timer wore off. Very, very nice. And M rated uh, is just with Lamia. So that was a good start. They got the first blood, and Cyanide didn't. Well, he died for it, but it wasn't. Uh, he didn't give up any gold for the privilege. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And yeah, and Amazing without blue buff is going to hurt a lot more than Shivana without blue buff. Uh, Nocturne really, really likes to have his blue buff because he needs to use his uh, Duskbringer on the camps in order to get the extra attack damage in order to clear Quipar. Oh, Swain looking for a gank on boss and Rupture goes down into the never move into the Torment and take tower shots as well because she was bananaing him. Looking to do something potentially on Suchi. Oh, oh, Valkyrie goes down interrupted by the Rupture. Looking to do something now. Double Flash goes out from Team Fnatic and that'll be another kill onto Suchi. I keep on saying Suche. Suche. Yeah. That is, that is uh, dodgy, but Suchi will go down for the two kills down at bottom. Nunu um, using himself as a mobile ward might actually be able to walk up to Amazing Golem and just eat it. I think that's what he's looking to yeah, do he here. To. Yeah, yeah there you go. nice. Like it. Irene is going to be looking to cut him off, though. Have a snowball for your troubles, and we'll be actually backing off. Ash also in the vicinity. Didn't really want to move on that one. And <laughs> there was some strong counter jungling there from Enrage. That really just synergizes with Shyvana's just pressure that she's exerting onto Nocturne yeah. right now. <laughs> it, it may not seem like much, one golem like that, but that actually is quite a lot of experience, and right now Nocturne is really hurting for that. He's level, level two. two. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that's pretty significant. But uh, interesting thing that we haven't really mentioned too much about here is that Fnatic have put Ash top with uh, N-rated. And the reason they've done that is they've put the classic uh, Cho'Gath at, um, <laughs> at bottom lane with Teleport. He, he can actually bomb in a 2v1 lane. He, ha he has his abilities are strong enough that he can uh, clear a creep wave without suffering too much damage. 
um, even from two people at once. And his sustain is huge if he can just get a few creeps here and there. He'll probably suffer for the first few levels, but once he's hit like level 5 or so, he'll be able to farm almost like he was in a one-on-one -on -one lane. Yeah, when he gets rolling, Cho'Gath stopping him is just like meeting a brick wall. Meanwhile, Minix Pekka taking a lot of damage from Pose. One more auto attack. There it is. Pose picking that one up with very low mana. Cyanide also looking to do something. Meanwhile, top Zoro Zero taking a lot of damage. Flash goes down into equilibrium, stunning him under turret. Flash goes down as well. Has the ignite ticking off, and he will die. Snowball will hit him in the face and take that to a one to one. Amazing, no mana really to follow up on that one either. And uh, yeah, a lot of action going down all over the map, and it looks like. Should be happening. Okay. But yeah, um, like I was saying, Cho'Gath really sort of passive laner. He's not going to mind farming under tower because he has a really high base attack damage. So it's very easy for him to last hit, even when the tower is hitting stuff as well. Though he did just take quite a lot of harass for no real gain um, against the Soraka lane. He's not going to be able to out out sustain them like by just taking damage. And I expect that um, we'll be seeing Suchi and Ajahn Provocateur um, heading up top at some point. But, you know, counter swap by Lamia, always a possibility. So, yeah. It, the, the only real trouble with swapping your um, mid and. Your, sorry, your, your mid, yeah. Swapping your mid with your mm -hmm. mid, swapping your top and your bot, is that if you do that. Um, you lose some of your control around Dragon. You've only got one person at bot lane. So if the enemy shoots for Dragon, you need to mobilize two people from top to reach bottom and uh, take some kind of advantage. But um, yeah, it, at this stage of the game, it's very difficult for um, Bonjiwaz to... Uh, um, that name. That name. Apparently it's Korean, um, which would explain why I'm having extreme amounts of difficulty pronouncing it. Um, but, yeah. At this stage of the game, it's difficult for them to take dragon, especially considering they don't actually have the strongest of dragon takers. Like, Nocturne is decent, but he's no Lee Sin. He's not going to be able to take it at level 6, 5. Yeah, when he's got his wriggles, yeah, I agree completely. I'm also looking at uh, Cho'Gath, and he's got two kills, so he's going to reach that point where he can just farm comfortably very soon, and, well, there he is, he's got the feast, and he's going to start increasing in size, which is a uh, dodgy term in certain, certain circumstances, but, um, yeah, honestly, he will be getting to the point where he's just unstoppable. Yeah, honestly, he's at that point already. Like, yeah. He is just, like, he'll miss a few creeps because he's being forced to his tower, but, you know, he's freely doing this. Like, he's, he's getting, what... 40 CS to Corky's 63. Uh, that's not a huge gap considering it's a 2v1 lane. Yeah, it's meanwhile, weird. yeah, Irelia has 41 actually in her lane. Possibly because she's being forced to the tower so much, I guess. But uh, actually, Corky is doing better than Ash in this scenario, which probably isn't what Fnatic wanted. No, that is for sure, but he did get the two kills. Enerated has been stunned and turned by Equilibrium, but. Uh, he should be out of there. Amazing. Also looking for a gank at top. He does have that level 6. Does not have the red buff, however, so maybe not able to do anything there. Meanwhile, in mid, expecting a lot of damage from Bose. One more water attack. Flash into it as well. One more tower shot would have finished that guy off, but I really, really looking to be aggressive. Amazing out there. I think he got spotted by the minions. He's going to go ahead and back off. Meanwhile, at bottom, Salonite and Sarah's looking to follow up onto his Provocateur. There goes the Dragon's Descent into the exhaust as well. Hill has gone down and the rupture off cooldown and so is finishing that one off. Suchi not able to deal enough damage and so is just going to <laughs> farm in front of him. <laughs> I don't care. Yeah. But yeah. Um, so, right now, actually there's no wards of Dragon, um, but it doesn't look like Fnatic are going to go for it. I guess they just don't know that fact because there are no wards, they haven't seen their enemies oh, go down. Taking a lot of damage. Meanwhile, we turn it on to Zoro Zero. Ultimate goes down with the Ash Arrow. Ultimate from Nunu as well, just to slow that down. One more auto attack from Lamia. There it is. We are to very low HP. And he should be also the Nocturne, really not able to follow up on this one, I don't think. But that is the power of an Ash Nunu lane. It's just like slow, 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 and uh, more slow. How can you get away? And literally, all she was trying to do there was CS and do a bit of damage to Lamia. Amazing. It has to be careful, though. The tower is falling fairly quickly, but so are the minions. Yeah, this is that—that that is the strength there, like kiting potential. 
because not only do you both have a slow, and both of you have extremely strong slows on both attack speed and movement speed, you also have the movement speed buff, which means that the difference between your movement speed and their movement speed is just enormous. It looks like Ari might be going for a... Uh, no, okay, they, they realized and they backed off. But uh, yeah, Ari was thinking about a gank at top, because Ari is a very strong tower diver. Her mobility and her ultimate, as a result, uh, directly tied to that, just allows her to uh, easily dive in and out of tower range while taking very little damage from it. And obviously her burst enables you, her to not have to spend very much time in tower aggro range. Yeah, for sure. So right now, everyone just farming up 6 and 3 right now to Fnatic, so they are definitely ahead. The swap-up has worked for them. And essentially what they were looking for more than anything, even if the lane swap-up didn't completely work, the fact that Shyvana is able to freely counter jungle. And meanwhile, bottom so is looking to do something. Dragon Descent goes down once again into the flash. Azen provoke a third, making a lot of damage. Actual Blessing goes down, but the magic damage combined with it's too much really to contend with. Sushi will be backing off, but that is still the pick that they got the first time round. And Rampage for so as so yeah the swap up is definitely working out for them maybe if not a completely in farm Shavana has been able to at least shut down that uh, nocturne by a decent way he's level seven right now and let's take a look at the farm in fact 56 farm it's 51 so he's actually ahead that's kind of interesting but if you look at the items he's just got a cloth armor a long sword and boots Being very bare has nocturne even had the opportunity to successfully gank yet no i mean he's he's not one and naught and that's probably because he's been playing catch-up farm. And right now, Tsuchi is actually kind of dicing with death. So oh, Rupture. <laughs> yeah. And that's kind of um, part of the strength of Cho'Gath in, in a 2v1 lane. Oh, Zero you... Zoro has been caught up at top. Ultimate goes down along with Nunu's ultimate. Flash goes down. Not chasing after this one. And unfortunately, Lamia realized before uh, before end race that Poe's going to finish that one off with the ultimate. Becky coming up as well, roaming around. Shutdown goes on to Cho'Gath. Meanwhile, a bottom pose could be okay. However, the um, never move has landed. Expecting will pick that one up onto Zoro Zero. Meanwhile, at bottom, he uh, will be mobilizing. MVP will be mobilizing for that Drake. Okay. Yeah, well, they understood they'd kill Cho'Gath at bottom, so he can't walk in and feast Smit steal. And Cyanide wasn't really in a position to interrupt. They pink warded it, so they knew that there weren't any uh, Fnatic wards around. And. Yeah, and they knew that Fnatic was heavily committed to top. So, why not just take Dragon? Very, it's a very sensible move on their part to take it at that point. And that, like I say, that's the problem with having your 2v1 lane at top. You end up... Sorry, my cat is being naughty. My cat. Um, <laughs> I'll deal with that in a second. Uh, yeah, they end up having uh, a little bit less presence. Shut up, cat. God, oh, okay, hold on. <laughs> okay, so while that happens... Meanwhile, yeah, honestly... Really just looking at these ganks for anything really to happen by herself, not too much happening, and uh, Decrepify will finish that one off for XP. Okay, really should start shoutcasting those uh, blue buff donations in case something <laughs> funky happens. Uh, but post right now, let's look at the CS. We really haven't looked at it too much. So 109 to Swain's 86, so that's a pretty significant advantage, along with the free kills with the roaming capability. Got the double Dorans and the Blasting Wand to Swain's Heart of Gold and the Chalice of Harmony. So he's gone back quite a long ways away because, well, it's 144 gold right now. Expect you looking to do something on Pose, perhaps. Snowball goes to the face, but that's about it. You're just kind of assisting Shyvana in the counter jungling at the moment, just following it around with the Oracle. And of course, the, uh, the Blood Bull is really nice to have as a Shyvana jungle. Then the yeah. dice were pretty much everything. Shyvana scales incredibly well off of attack speed. Um... Her passive, I think it is, um, but yeah, her basic attacks give her all of her abilities different effects. So attacking more often gives it even more on those on those effects. And um, I've got to say, actually, this this Swain lane has really not worked out as well as I was expecting it to. Um, I mean, Ark is three and naught here. <laughs> that was pretty interesting. Lamia just sent the arrow looking for um, the kill on pose and just hit Nocturne instead. Nah. Like, while he's drungling, he was like, what? Scouting! <laughs> that was interesting. So, uh, someone's moving on to Uchi, just trying to do some damage. Interesting. But, meanwhile, mid, they are sieging. And will they be able to get the turret? They are two people against four right now. And Zoro Zero heading there as well. 
Who versus four? Mm, it looks like they're going to back off. They don't want to risk being caught out at the tower because that, even if you're not actually in tower aggro range, it does actually restrict your movements. Makes it very difficult for you to get into certain positions. And it looks like Soas is going to push down bottom tower. Yeah, See, the swap up has led them, led to them having a direct sort of pushing advantage. Because if you look at uh, Fnatic's top tower, it hasn't taken any damage at all. Whereas Soaz was able to keep the aggro off of his tower better than Aurelia was. And so, yeah, that's still standing, albeit on only a sliver of health. But it only needs to be standing on that much health for it to be difficult to take out without minions. It becomes dangerous at that point. But, uh, yeah. yeah, right now. Uh, I'm trying to think late game now, though. Um... Ari will be remain strong. Will remain strong throughout the game, to be honest, and will be good for trying to take out Lamia, but might actually suffer against Soaz's silence because um, if you can silence Pose, well, Ari, in the middle of her Spirit Rush combo, she actually just doesn't quite often doesn't know what to do with herself. Like she ends up in this kind of scenario where her, her main damage is gone and also her mobility which she was relying Rampo on. actually going for the initiate, ultimate goes down with the paranoia straight onto Soaz, Xpeki needs to get out of there fairly quickly as Swain more auto tank misses along with Soaz, Ashao comes down from top 5 versus 4 right now, Cyanide looking to do some damage onto Pose, Dragons he sent for the escape, Exhaust did go down as well, 4 versus 5, no one dies, N rate, Soaz, Xpeki all flashing up red, however Ash just carrying on pushing. Uh, it looks like MVP are going to put down mid, but will Ash take a top tower in return? Which is, this is a more well, in a turret going to be a bit more valuable. I really looking to do something about it though, and can she do or pose actually flashing in, looking to kill onto Soas, but not going to happen. <laughs> yeah, Soas right now is actually pretty hard to kill. He's got what 2,500 health. That's that's kind of end game levels of health for some characters. I wouldn't be surprised if, if someone like Ash finishes the game with less health than Cho'Gath has right now. Um, and yeah, that, that obviously makes it very difficult to kill him. He also has 218 armor. Not a lot of magic with this though. So, hmm, he's probably not going to be able to withstand Ari's burst very well, but honestly she's not going to be looking to burst him, so he knows he doesn't have to worry about that too much. Uh, yeah, meanwhile Cho'Gath yeah, and uh, this is another thing about Jogath. He really does like to have cooldown reduction because he is going to die, almost certainly, at some point in any given game. And when he dies, he loses his feast stacks. When he loses his feast stacks, that obviously makes him less tanky and it makes it easier to kill him. Having cooldown reduction means he can get back to full, ch to maximum Jogath status <laughs> as soon as possible. Um, which, yeah, is very handy for him because oh but it looks like oh Nebuka. the Baron Rush very clever I mean okay so, um, Shyvana's not there but they're thinking right th he's there trying to counter junglers wait where's the rest of his team have they clicked I think they have Shyvana's heading up Zoro Zero yeah they're trying to move their way towards Baron but they've been on for a, a long time <laughs> and Rex has actually died to Baron tanking a bit too much but a support for the Baron is absolutely fine if they can counter initiate right now it's absolutely okay pose going in with the ultimate too offensive lands of deception they really don't have too much safe haven at that turret but that's what they're going to go for at least so i going to go ahead and recall along with um along with xpeki lamia popping that ghost zero zero has been stunned under the turret taking a lot of damage from that as well amazing coming in one by one ladies uh, will also be picked up two kills going down cyanide turning this one around pose trying to get out of there along the rest of his team which way they're going to go? They're going to be sandwiched in. Oh, Choke, that's not going to go for it. The rest of his team is just going to go ahead and recall. They're fairly low mana post, missing the charm as well. And the rupture goes down. In fact, they could get something done. Slow also lands and connects from Lamia. Feast goes down onto Pose as well, not getting the kill. Rupture once again onto Suchi. Nice jukes from Soaz. Just slowly, slowly encroaching on their position, but surely this should stop now. Another rupture onto Suchi. And uh, okay, it's, it's, it's sh it should be over now. It's uh, mm, yeah. but that protracted chase there has actually let Fnatic get into a much better position. 
stop yeah. them from recalling, and now they can't afford to fight because Fnatic could honestly die them right now. And meanwhile, Lamia and Cyanide and Enraged went back and got healed. Now they could, you know, they they can push towers for free, basically. Yeah, what was uh, very clever about that Baron take was the fact that ooh, Zerozo looking a bit angry, but they will be moving on to Drake as well. What was interesting about it is they let their Nunu die, basically, so the rest of them would be on higher health. So if they went for the trade, then they'd be in good shape. They were thinking Nunu's not really going to offer too much into the fight, so why not just let him die? We'll have the rest of them on 90% HP. They will be taking up that Drake for free, though. Interesting that they didn't decide to uh, contest that, I suppose. Yeah, actually, very interesting. They didn't decide to contest that. Another aspect of the um, Nunu fighting the um, tanking the Baron is that he has uh, Baron has a damage debuff, um, and Nunu wasn't really going to be doing outputting all that much damage to clearing Baron. And Fnatic knew they needed to clear Baron as fast as they possibly could because if if Bonjoas got there at the same time that they were uh, fighting Baron they would have been in seriously dire straits, they would have probably been aced at that point. And yeah, so obviously clearing as fast as possible was necessary, so Fnatic had N-rated tank even to the last second, enabling um, them, their damage dealers to do the maximum amount of damage that they possibly could. Yeah, it was a very intelligent move for multiple reasons from Fnatic, and uh, it's something you don't generally think about until it happens. And you have a lot of just like area roots knockups, which like if you get caught by that, you're going to be chunked off by the rest of it. And by then, you have slows and slows and more slows. Just they have a great picking team, basically. They have a lot of follow-up on it as well. That's really what Shyvana likes, considering she has no real AOE. And there's the initiation trying to pose right up in the front. There's a shutdown straight for Sweden. Let's see of X Peke, and they probably will be seeding this one in now with a loss of Ari. That's a massive amount, a loss, massive portion lost of their damage. Amazing potentially caught as well. We'll be spell shielding that. Have a snowball anyway. They can carry on sieging, but they have a lot of counter in this shade. Let's knock up one two again. Flash forced by Nocturne going in with Zero Zaro. He really doesn't have the capability to stop himself from dying and he will barely survive during the set goes down will be picked up by an auto attack Zushi taking a lot of damage right now and he will be easily picked up Paranoia goes down to try and quell the storm as it were but what can he do with the AD carry and AP carry already dead Pose now respawning but the damage is already done 2 for 0 pretty much and whether they can carry on sieging I don't know on such low health but they could probably sweep the jungle maybe top t uh, take top tower as well or maybe just uh, dissipate you can really see the reliability buff on Cho'Gath's rupture. That kind of um, pick off on Ari, which in turn enabled all, all of the uh, blow up the tower kill, the diving of Corky, and etc. That all oh, Who's looking for the pick up to Lamia? Nice Duke from the Charm. Ignite goes down as well. Xpeke also there. They can see with a minion, and that was an ultimate pop from Pose. As long as the along with the Ignite, Xpeke taking a lot of damage. Lands the orb of deception on the return. Pose just missing the charm, and move goes out, and Xpeki is still looking to juke, barely out of range, Asho goes up just to really counter initiate than anything, just to deter them from carrying on, but uh, that was pretty clutch. Yes, that was uh, Xpeki risking his life, he knew he had to keep Lamia safe, so he did do the first very aggressive play with the intent of keeping himself, giving himself away, but then he managed to juke some of Pose's attacks and was left kind of thinking, well, maybe I could, you know, threaten her out. You know, I can I can sustain through his damage, and currently his main two damage skills were on cooldown. So, he did a little bit of, um, <laughs> a little bit of ballsy playing, but it worked out for him because, you know, he was, uh, good at duking, basically. Like, if, if Ari had landed a skill, she, he would have probably died. But, uh, yeah. And like I was saying, Cho'Gath's reliability buff was that his cast time is now a consistent and shorter time. So, Rupture is obviously therefore easier to land, and Rupture is a great skill if it lands. The, it is a knock-up for, what, a second? And that isn't mitigated by um, tenacity by Mercury's Shreds or whatever. Uh, ooh. Whoa, Sushi! Yeah. Well, you could ooh, still Cho'Gath's not actually be teleported in, yeah. in there. They have a lot of people around the area, they can still cut them off. Sinai taking pretty much no damage from the turret, so she's going to turn around and trade with this one. And Nedamu will finish that one off. Xpeki on the front lines along with Enrated, so as from behind, 
the wall of health. What can you do about it? x is still taking that turn on. Very low health. Paranoia goes in, picking that kill. Well, then, ultimate from n -Rage, slowing the rest of the team down. And so I was just soaking up all the damage. Just doesn't even care that the rest of his team has forced the back off. The AP carry is down. Nunu is down, but not a huge damage threat. The Blood Boil is off the AD carry, however. And they will be uh, will be backing off. That was a 2 for 2 trade. I'm not really sure who came off better, maybe maybe equal, but Surrender Vote failed for um for purple team. Interesting. Well that's because um that was a circumstance that was really in their favour. Um they, they were fighting under tower and they were really caught out and Soaz was somewhat out of position at the start and wasn't the one tanking the tower, which is clearly what he wants to be doing because he has two hundred and four armor and three thousand one hundred health. But even in spite of that they came off equal. That's that's a bad sign, basically. That means you really need to have a really advantageous position if you want to come back into this. Yeah, definitely. So, looking at the thing right now, so, Soaz is just, well, ridiculous. Like, what can you do against him? He's got how much health right now? 3,000, 300 something, and 200 armor, 150 magic resist. He's so strong right now. So strong. Like, he may not be doing a lot of damage, but he's got the CC, he's got the utility, and he's pretty much unkillable. With yeah. the rest of his team behind him, then, yeah, it's just a brick wall in front of them. Level 3 Feast is actually 650 true damage. That's quite well, a that's lot of damage. That's pretty significant, actually, yeah. Yeah, that, that, you know, that'll do, what, on Nocturne, that's slightly more than a quarter of his health. And Fnatic going for another Baron. Wow. They can certainly, certainly do it. Uh, they have the tankiness, they're really not going to take too much damage from it. So, uh, good ward clearing capability. Okay, x just going to walk into the Baron knockup. <laughs> So it's fine. Duking all those shots from Mari and then walking into like a really telegraphed one. Nice. But Poe's back, forcing him back pretty well with the Fox Fires. However, Amazing is really split from his team. Doesn't matter too much since he does have Paranoia, which will be up in around 5 seconds. So they need to really wait for that. If they had engaged right there, they could have caught them. However, oh. Astro goes down to Alta Suji. Perfect initiate. Along with Sinai coming up with. The ultimate and the rest of the damage. Sinai forced the back off, they are focusing him down. So I was on the front line still. Amazing just being caught in between all the AoE damage. Lamy is now unstoppable, just chasing this one after Pose. Omni goes down by N-rated, picking up the kill onto Suchi and Asian Provocateur. Pose now probably gonna be picked up by XPK and the rest of his team. There it is, there's the ace, there's the GG well played. And, and the surrender vote. Yeah. After that fight there was no way they were coming back. But uh, the amusing thing is, Fnatic can't actually play the final, and Bonji well will be taking the final anyway. <laughs> so it doesn't matter that they Watch lost. that game you just lost? You, you didn't. Doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> defaulting through, but anyway guys, we'll be back in a bit for the final, so stay tuned.